Hello there. So welcome to Lead Code Solving Series, and today we're solving 844, which is called Backspace String Compare, and let's just dive right into it. So I mean, if you're like me, you just skim over the description and you know understand the problem based on examples. But basically, the idea is if you see a hashtag in a string, that means it's backspace. Okay, let's uh, see this example. Um, let's say you have a string like this, and whenever you see a hashtag, which means it's a backspace button, so you're just deleting the back letter, I guess. So it becomes A and C. So in this case, if you see a hashtag in here, then you're just deleting the previous letter, right? So it becomes also becomes A and C. So these two are equal, which means you have to return true. Okay, next example. What if you see like double hashtags, right? Which means you have to delete two letters. So you see double hashtag, you delete these two letters and then this becomes empty string. It's just like you're typing on a keyboard, you're typing, I mean, pressing backspace. Uh, also like in here, deleting this and then deleting that. So it also becomes empty string, which is also equal to true. Like those two strings are equal. Okay, um, let's just go into the solution then. Okay, the brute force solution, right? So the brute force solution in this problem is actually not that terrible. So um, the first instinct would be, what if you you know try to solve this using just pen and paper and without no code, right? What I would do is you basically have to build like character of lists. I mean, a list of characters. So whatever I see a letter other than hashtag, I'm just building like these lists. So whenever I see a hashtag going from here to here, I'll just delete the last thing I saw. And then what if I need to see another hashtag, I'm just gonna delete the last thing I saw. So, and then if I see other than hashtag, I'm just gonna add it and E, I'm just gonna add it and a hashtag and F. And the last thing I see a hashtag, which means I have to delete this. And then this resultant list would be A, D, E, which is the result. Okay. let's go to the next one, right? It will be A, X, Y, and then I see a hashtag, delete that, another hashtag, delete that. And then I just add these two letters. So that result becomes A, D, E, and then compare these two, they're equal, so yeah, it's true. Just return that. Um, in terms of time complexity and space complexity, right? So time would be O of M plus N. I'm assuming M is the average length of S, N is average length of T. Um, we're iterating through these two strings one at a time, and also at the end we're comparing them, so that takes O, M plus N time. So in terms of space, it's also O, M plus N, because we are keeping track of this using newly created list, right? This can go on and on until the length of that. This also can go until the length of that. So these two are the space and time complexity. Okay, um, this is a pretty straightforward solution, but in terms of time, you cannot do anything better than this. You have to go through each of the characters, I mean, minimum, right? So I don't think there is a solution that is less than O plus O M plus N. That's just not possible. But in terms of space, there may be, right? I don't know, but we have to explore that. Um, in an interview, you just jump right in and then you know give this solution up front without you know solving, I mean writing the code per se, but just say, okay, I found a solution which is O M plus N time, O M plus N space, right? And then ask do you think that's a good solution? Should I write that? And then if your interviewer is saying, well, maybe, yeah, you can write it, but if there is a better solution. You... So uh, what if you have no idea about the solution, right? You just have to rely on your instincts, I guess. You have to see the solution for, uh, yourself. Um, in this case, you cannot store anything in, you know, a variable or anything like that. You cannot create a new list of the so you can maybe declare some variables to keep track of count and stuff, but you cannot create any more lists and add it to it or something like that. Which basically means you have to iterate through one character at a time and compare them in a way. So that's the only thing, but it doesn't make sense to compare it from the front, right? So if you go from the front, okay, let's say A and B are equal, and then you're just comparing B and X, 
and then how do you even know if b is equal to x because it is i mean these two characters will be deleted because of the hashtags but if you're going from left to right you just can't know right so there's the hint there you just go from right to left instead of front to back right if you're going from back to front then you can see the hashtags and you can basically jump and skip characters so um you see a hashtag oh i just found that one hashtag so i'm just going to skip the next letter right okay uh, my uh, hashtag is finished so i have to compare these two and then next term these two so okay i see a hashtag i increase the counter by one so i see one hashtag and the next one oh i see a second hashtag so which means i have to skip two characters right and then i see two characters so i'm just going to skip these two and then finally my hashtag is finished so i just compare this against a so there's your um, O of one solution in terms of space. You just keep track of the end, uh, keep track of the count of the hashtags, and then just skip the characters necessary and go from right to left. That's the idea. Okay, uh, I think that is about it, and let's just jump right into the Leetcode solution. All right, uh, as always, let's just start from the brute force approach and. As I said, we are going to keep track of everything by a list, and then we are going to iterate through the string one character at a time and basically add it to it. I mean, it's not straightforward as this. As I said, if there should be a condition, the condition is if the string is a hashtag, then we have to pop it, right? Instead of appending it, we have to pop from the list and if it's else then you have to append the string basically it's as simple as that and then you have to return the my list the reason i'm returning my list is because you know you're going to perform this code in s and both s and t so it makes sense to refactor this into a separate function so let's just say this is called a result string function that accepts any string and then basically returns the resulting list. Okay, so using this function, we can just return if these two are the same, right? So self dot result string of s is equal to self dot result string of t. Yeah, it's as simple as that, but there is one problem with the solution. Uh, in Python, you cannot pop it from an empty list. So you have to have extra check in here. You have to check if my list is like defined or if it is greater than one element. That's it. Uh, if you submit it, this will work. But if you really don't like this uh, line right here, you can always check it in here and my list like that. But if you do that, then you have to check also a condition in here because let's say your my list is empty, right? So it doesn't go through this, but it will go through that. But, but what if this S is also a hashtag, right? Then you're appending a hashtag into the list, which is not preferred. So you have to check if this is not a hashtag and then you can remove this line right here. So let's just submit it and see what happens. Okay, it works, so great. So that's the brute force solution. Uh, let's just comment that out and then move on to the pointer solution. So as I said, we would probably need a point uh, count variable to count the number of hashtags that are available. I mean, that we are giving a track, right? So it will start from zero. And then also we're going from right to left, which means we have to keep track of the indices. Let's just say length of S and J is length of T. And also we have to have minus one because, you know, programming, right? While um, so we have to keep track. I mean, we have to do while loop until there is like, uh, until these indices make sense, right? Which means uh, both of these has to be greater than zero. But I mean, do you really think this is a correct way? But let's just dive in, right? Um, so what if an, a string was like really long, A, B, C, D, F, and then the other one was like just F, right? So you're comparing this against that, and then probably this will go to the left, which means the index would be minus one, 
and then this will go here, but you still have to keep track of like what is happening over here, right? So you can't just end, okay, one, if one of them is minus one, you just can't stop it. You have to go through and see what is happening on the left side. You just, it, it's in the cloud, right? I mean, it, it, it's unknown, so you have to analyze that, which means this should not be and, it should be or. So if both of them is like minus one, then forget it. You don't have to do anything, but if one of them is, um, that has characters on the left, you have to analyze what is happening there. Okay, great. Now that's out of the way, we have to uh, imp implement the hash, I mean, hashtag counter, right? So if s of i is equal to a hashtag, then we probably want to increase the counter of the hashtag. But is it this simple? I mean, I think there is one caveat to this. Let's draw some examples. What if the string was like that, right? So what I mean is, okay, I see here a hashtag, I increase the counter by one, and then I see here a hashtag, I increase the counter by one, which means the result of the two, and I, I see a character, right? So, which means I have to decrease the counter by one, and I see a hashtag again, so I have to increase the counter by one, which means I have to delete these two strings, right? So, also, with keeping track of the hashtag, we also have to keep track of if the count is greater than zero. If the greater, if it's greater than zero, we just have to keep moving to the left, right? So it makes sense that we have to say, or if the count is greater than zero, we just keep moving to the left. And in here, I have to say, okay, if S of I is equal to a hashtag, then, we increase the count by one. So if the result is not a hashtag, then we decrease the count by one. So that's that. And then obviously we have to move to the left, so which means I have to decrease the counter by one in here as well. And uh, since we are accessing the S of i -th character in here, we also have to check if the i makes sense, right? If the i is not negative number. So we have to do this and that. Great. Okay, since we are doing with S in here, we have to also do that with T. So I'll just copy it and then change everything in terms of T. T, J, oh, this count is, should be I. This also should be J. This is T, J, 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 J. Okay, cool. Okay, this uh, does work and it will keep track of the hashtags and then move it to the left. And then now at the end, what we'll have is two characters and we have to compare the, those two, right? So if S of I is not equal to T of J, then we have to say, okay, that is false which means, you know, we're just basically saying, okay, if what if A, B, B, C, hashtag, right? So we're doing this and then skipping that, skipping that, and then we have to compare these two characters. And then if it's not the same, then it's uh, a false, right? So that's what I'm checking here. And also we're if we're accessing I and J, we have to say if those two indices make sense, right? And so we have to check whether J and I is greater than zero. Okay, cool. And still there is one caveat to the solution. The reason why is because of this example right here I wrote, but I'll just write it again. What if the example is like this, right? So I compare this against that, and then this will move to the left, which means the index would be minus one, and then in, the, in here index would be one. Um, I'm comparing something that is with nothing, right? So which means this should be false. Uh, this not, there's no other way, right? I have to check that in here also. So if i is less than zero and j is greater than or equal to zero, or the, the other way around, right? So if j is less than zero and i is greater than or equal to zero, if basically what it means is if one of them is defined, one of them is undefined, it is false. 
Okay, cool. I think that's about it. And at the end, if we manage to get out of this for only while loop, then we have to return not false. It's true. So we found no problem with the string and it should be good. Let's just try that, see what happens. All right, it didn't pass on array, right? right. <laughs> Time limit exceeded means it's like a forever loop thing, right? So I forgot to add these two parts. If nothing happens, we still have to keep moving to the left. So here. Okay, cool. Um, this is kind of BS because if I do that again, there was one time when I got like 95%, but we'll see. Yeah, I guess this is not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, okay, whatever. I mean, in in our heart, we know that this is a better solution, right? But it's kind of complicated, but still it is a better solution than the last one. Okay, um, let's jump into the solution of Litco, what it's saying, right? So let's start with the um, brute force approach. Brute force approach means it's just using uh, build, uh, building the string and comparing it, right? Um, in here, they used stack in Java, but I don't really think uh, stack is really necessary in here. The reason why is because, you know, we're just popping the last element, right? So the deleting the last element from an array, it doesn't take much time. And also uh, increasing the size of the array, it doesn't take much time, right? So for me, just using a stack is kind of overkill in here, but I mean, if you want, you can also use a stack or whatever you want. But if you see the Python solution, it's pretty similar to what I what we did, and we're just building and uh, appending and popping, right? But the one, there's one difference here. They're joining the array and returning it as a string. This is kind of unnecessary because you're converting it to a string, and also you're basically uh, comparing it here. You can just do that with one pass, right? So this is basically doing like one join OM operation and also a comparing operation, which is also OM. So it is kind of slower than our solution right here on the brute force approach, but hey, I mean, whatever works, right? Um, let's go to the next solution, which uses the pointers. So if we look at the Java, then the Java solution is pretty similar. I, I checked and it is like doing basically the same thing. Um, you can see the comments and stuff, but um, if you go to the Python solution, this is where it gets so frustrated. If you understand the solution, great. I have no idea what is going on in here. Like, look at this. Um, Editor tools, iZip, longest, and what the hell is that function do, right? I mean, if you understand this, great. I'm proud of you, but, you know, if you're solving this on a whiteboard or, you know, doing a phone call with an interviewer, there's like 99% chance they will not understand the solution because, you know, most of the people don't write, I mean, don't write in Python. They're basically like C++, Java, or JavaScript experts. So they, they wouldn't know about these operations. And what I, you know, usually like to do is just, I write Python solution if it's like was Java solution. So that's like more elegant and also like really widespread, I guess. So, I mean, presenting the solution just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I mean, don't, don't fancy yourself with the interviewer. They're just going to think you're arrogant and stuff. I think, um, you know, presenting it this way is just much more elegant and just tells you that you are fundamental, I mean, knows the fundamentals. And knowing these stuffs, I don't think that, it, that gives you an edge, anything like that. And I guess, I mean, you will feel superior to them. But, I mean, if I was taking the interview or someone handed me the solution, I would just be super mad. Like, you know, no, I don't understand that. Just, you know make that into an um, understandable solution. That's my personal opinion about that. And th th that's also one of the reasons why I don't like the Python solution of the lead code section. Okay, that's uh, enough about the rant, but um, yeah, that's it. Um, if you have any suggestions, please leave a comment. Um, I mean, which problem do you wanna discuss, if you want me to solve? And if you have problems with the formatting that I'm doing, you can also suggest that. I'm willing to take your criticisms, anything like that. So. Bye for now.